how y'all feel it. That's what I'm talking about. All right, all right, let's get this cracking then. Um, I can see some of y'all know me. I see some familiar faces in the audience. For y'all that don't know me, my name is Flip. Real name is Jeremiah Benjamin. Came here all the way from South Central to talk to y'all about the future of Web3 gaming and utility-based NFTs. Um, yeah, so I'm Flip. I'm a metaverse architect. I'm a game designer. Uh, I founded two companies, uh, 88 Ideas, which is probably in a way. There we go. All right, so 88 Ideas is an uh, independent gaming and metaverse studio. We focus on photorealistic Web3 games and metaverse experiences. Pod Labs is our, our gaming platform and marketplace. So basically, 88 Ideas creates the games. Pod Labs uh, deploys and distributes the game through NFTs. So, I mean, one of the biggest reasons that I'm here, and it is my opinion, that in order for NFTs to reach what we are calling mass adoption, there has to be there has to be more incentives or an incentive placed in front of at the top of the, the list in front of financial incentives. We will never reach. Can y'all hear me? All right, there we go. It is my opinion that we will not reach mass adoption for NFTs or our technology without inherent utility. So there's a quote here, there has to be other reasons to buy NFTs besides financial incentives or every bear market will lose a significant portion of people that we gained through financial incentives and then they lost their money or they they don't have the ability to have diamond hands. They don't know how to, to hold. So as a, a game designer, I do believe that gaming is one of the verticals. We have a couple different verticals for how we plan to reach more than 4% of the US adult population owning NFTs. One of them is gaming. Some people say music is that fashion, uh, entertainment, and I'm not here to say one will beat out the other. All I'm saying is all of us have a responsibility to provide utility for you, uh, to provide utility for NFTs outside of financial incentives. So me being a gamer, I mean, me being a game designer, this is why I believe gaming utilities are important to the future of uh, to the future of NFTs. So, sixty-four billion dollars was spent on in-game assets in 2020. Sixty-four billion dollars was spent on avatars, weapons, all of these different in-game assets, and then. And these assets were, were bought, these assets were paid for without necessarily there being an inherent top of the line financial incentive for owning them. People owned them because they loved the games that they were playing. People owned them because it shaped some form of identity within that game that they were playing. And most of these games did not have financial ecosystems outside of it. So, for mass adoption, one of the biggest things, I believe, is retention of people that you onboard. So how do you make people come in, but then how do you make them stay? Gaming has very inherent and clear ways that it can make people come in and can make people stay. Games that provide a sense of achievement and rewards for completing challenges, these are, these are statistics, these are, yeah, these are researched um, statistics that these these type of things are more likely to retain users. Games that offer a wide, a, a wide range or variety of ways that you could customize your characters, weapons, all of these things. Um, my biggest problem with, my biggest issues with financial incentives are the fact that 
if they are not financially beneficial, people do not look for the utility. Once the fact that they have not been financially beneficial to them, they don't really care about all of the other stuff that that thing is offering. There's a statistic here. Only 14% of U.S. adults have heard of NFTs. Only 4% of those actually own them. And based on that, they, they perceive that there's still this what are they calling it? This small group of early adopters or enthusiasts that kind of make that, that make that or shape that, that world. Um, we're all in alpha groups and stuff like that. There are literally, <laughs> I sit in alpha groups and like the same people know about the same projects and know which ones are gonna pump, which ones, yeah, we, we have information on that. So. All I'm saying is, as a game designer, I choose to be a utility for, a utility builder for NFTs, basically. Um, why gaming? I believe that, that gaming already has inherently the things that the audience is already trained to sort of do the desired action. Our desired action is for people to basically, if I'm talking about building a game, my desired action is for people to buy or purchase NFTs that they can use inside of their games. I want people to sort of have, when they buy an NFT, I want them to ask the question, how do I use this thing? What do I get out of this thing? How can I find value without necessarily associating it with the money that I invested in it. I don't think any kid actually feels cheated from buying something with their Roblox or their V-Bucks or whatever, and when they buy an asset, they never feel cheated that they cannot go back and sell that asset and get the same amount of money for it. So I believe that gaming inherently already has train people for the desired action and we we do have the ability to offer gamers something in ownership right now if you buy in-game assets you're basically leasing that asset from the from sort of like the the game creator you do not own the asset that is being used inside of these experiences these games NFT give, NFTs, the technology gives the user the ability to own the, the asset that is within their games and opens up a whole myriad of like potential use cases for NFTs outside of financial games. The biggest question is can we have our cake and eat it too? I am not saying... <laughs> I am not saying that we cannot make money from NFTs. That is not my, that is not my thesis, that, that NFTs should not be able to, to sort of um, to grow in value. I do believe they should be able to grow in value. I just want, I just want the focus of when you purchase an NFT. As an NFT designer or a game designer or utility to designer, I want people to ask themselves the question before they ask about financial gain. I was standing over there, these guys now, we have beautiful photorealistic games inside of Web3 now, which is what I'm a very big proponent of. It started off very 8-bit, 16-bit, but now we're, we're coming up with beautiful games. The first question somebody asked the guy was, is this game play to earn? And inherently, I'm not saying that that's a bad question. I just wish that question was the third or fourth question that was being asked. I wish that question was, when you ask about how can you financially gain from a game, I wish that was fourth on the list for why you actually purchase an NFT, um, especially that is backed by a metaverse or a Web3 game or anything like that. I want people to be able to use their NFTs 
and find value in just the use. Not feel cheated when the floor price drops. I, as a game designer, I can say selfishly that I don't want to sit around and be responsible for the floor price going up or down. I would prefer to just continue to build qualities or things inside of my game that give people the feeling um, of an experience and that they can feel like they're not cheated as long as I've delivered them an excellent gaming experience or an excellent metaverse experience. So, I don't even know what the next slide is. Okay, this. These are some of, this is a game that I built called Rehydrate. So, for instance, this is just an example. If you buy the passport to Rehydrate, you get to go into Rehydrate. Now, Rehydrate is a single player metaverse completely focused on mindfulness, meditation. So I built this photorealistic, beautiful world it's on near blockchain. I built this world so people can go into it. There is no play to earn, no participate to earn. There's no tokenomics inside of it. You go in this place for a five minute break, five to seven minute break. You find different places inside of it to meditate, find places where you can do affirmations, stuff like that, or you can just choose to explore your paradise. But the purpose is that when someone buys the NFT, as long as it has improved their life, as long as it has done something for a quality of life that if they come back and they purchase the passport for $100, they have found $100 worth of value in the meditation, in the time spent, in the experience, and stuff like that. Shout out to my co-founder, Beware. If you go going to rehydrate, you'll hear the voice. Um, and then, here's just, these are assets on the side of different characters, cars, lofts. So, my thing is, as a game designer, as a, as a founder of a gaming studio, I simply want to create games. I want people to find value in the games, in playing the games, and not find value in sort of like the financial ramifications of buying the NFT. Can these NFTs go, can these NFTs go up in value? Yes, that is a possibility. But I'm not here to sell securities, that is not my intent when coming into the space. So as long as I can build beautiful games, and not just me, that's all of these game designers that you have lined up here and everything like that, I feel like as long as we can place a focus on delivering utility, excellent gaming experiences, excellent metaverse experiences, that should be worth the money that was that should be worth the money that was invested by the person to buy the NFT. Um, there are 450,000 450, um, retail traders in, in US America right now. There are 169 million gamers. In my opinion, that is what mass adoption looks like. It looks like the 169 million and not the 450,000 people. Um, so as long as the first thing people think about are finances when they think about NFTs, will always stay four to 10%. The minute they start associating it with great experiences and utilities, I think then we have the ability to advance to bringing in 169 million people in the US. Billions of people worldwide. So that is the end of my talk. I, I got 30 seconds. One question, can I answer one question? If anybody has questions, no questions. All right, then. Oh, 
were saying that you um like somebody can buy the nft and it could be like on i know you build on near uh would these nfts be transferable to uh, different blockchains or you know just how would that work as far as the maintaining that ownership of the nft so i believe as a you guys heard this question i believe as a utility provider the future is chain agnostic i will not continue to be able to build on one chain one experience may be subject to one blockchain but even that blockchain even if i choose that blockchain in my opinion there has to be a way that people can if they have metamask whatever however they want to keep their collection that they do have the ability near has aurora which is uh, a bridge to ethereum near also is working on a thing called bos so i do believe that the future is chain agnostic and I will not be able to, or any provider here will not be able to solely provide for one chain. But yes, the future is chain agnostic in my opinion and how I build games. All right, my time is up, but thank you guys for listening in to the talk. I really appreciate it. Yeah, if you need to find me, I'll be on the side of the stage or something.